every living organism needs water to survive and function. In the United States, most of us are fortunate to have taps in our homes that provide us with clean and safe drinking water. We use this water and send waste down the drain. Have you ever thought about where this water and waste goes? In the past, we followed the idea that the solution to pollution is dilution. In other words, whatever water we put back into a water system would eventually disappear. So we dumped much of our waste into our rivers. Today, we understand that the waste material that we have added to our rivers contaminated the ecosystem, and in many cases the pollution never went away or was diluted. Today, we depend on our waste treatment facilities to remove waste materials from water before we add it back to the natural waterway. Remarkably, in most cases, the water we return to rivers is in better shape than the natural river water. About 98% of the material entering preliminary treatment is water. The other 2% is waste. The first step in the treatment process is coarse screening. Here, mechanical bar screens collect larger waste material. After screening, the wastewater passes through grit chambers to remove sand and gravel. The solid waste material caught by the screens and grit chamber is collected and hauled to a landfill. The wastewater is passed on to primary settling tanks. In primary settling tanks, the heavy solids are removed from the wastewater after they accumulate on the floor of the tank. Lighter wastes float to the top of the wastewater and form a layer of scum. Scum is removed by skimming the surface of the water. After being collected, the heavy solids and scum are then sent to the sludge handling system for further processing. The wastewater of the primary treatment is effluent and passes on to the secondary treatment facility. The flow from the primary tank enters the secondary treatment tank and is mixed with sludge from the clarifier to form a mixed liquor that is treated in an aeration tank. Air and microorganisms are added to the mixed liquor to break down the organic pollutants. The aerobic organisms thrive in this nutrient-rich environment. They consume and subsequently remove the vast quantity of organic matter dissolved in the water. The microorganisms gather on the organic matter to form flock. This material settles to the bottom of the tank and also floats to the top and can be removed and added to the sludge handling system. Mixed liquor is added to aeration tanks and the remaining solids in the form of scum and settled material are removed to clear the water. A portion of the sludge with microorganisms is removed to the secondary treatment to form new mixed liquor. The effluent then passes on to tertiary treatment. In tertiary treatment, water is filtered through sand, gravel, and possibly crushed coal to remove small solids. In some cases, chlorine is added to kill harmful microorganisms. If chlorine is added, then the treatment plant follows with sulfur dioxide to dechlorinate the water before it is discharged into the river. In Lansing's plant, ultraviolet light is used instead of chlorine to kill harmful bacteria before discharging the water into the Grand River. A vacuum filter squeezes water from the sludge. The dried sludge can be hauled to a landfill or in some cases used for agricultural production. The wastewater treatment plant that serves Lansing, Michigan receives 37 million gallons of water every day. At maximum peak flow, they receive 107 million gallons. The behavior of the public can significantly reduce the amount of water entering a plant for treatment. By adopting simple lifestyle changes, like using toilets that require less water to flush, or turning off the tap when brushing your teeth or shaving, everyone can make a positive difference in our environment. Thank you.